oppose this bill, and I do so on the basis that I certainly don't support uh, gender selection abortion, but I do oppose this bill because I think uh, it represents the thin edge of the wedge. And uh, I want to also put on the record that I am not speaking out this matter. When this matter was raised in our caucus the other day, I went straight to uh, Senator Moore as manager of our business and said, I want to speak on this bill. And the reason I want to speak on this bill is because I am a passionate advocate of women's rights. I have always been for as long as I can remember. And I believe it is a woman's right to choose. And I have been a passionate advocate of that position for a very, very long time. And I think what we heard from Senator Bullock today, despite us having quite contrary positions on a woman's right to choose abortion, what Senator Bullock did was illustrate what a difficult decision it is for a woman when she chooses to have an abortion. You heard him talk about a uh, extremely uh, distressing family matter. And it's not about the, the lovely six-year-old niece he now has. It's about the choice women make at the time when they discover they're pregnant. That's what the choice is, and I think what Senator Bullock did was illustrate uh, what a difficult choice that is for women. So why am I opposed to this bill? One, there is no proof at all in Australia that abortions are uh, taking place um, because of gender selection. And I would have to say that um, I was very active in Western Australia many years ago when we had the very difficult fight uh, when Labor was in government to decriminalise abortion in Western Australia. And the catalyst uh, for that was when uh, two doctors in a clinic in Rivervale were charged by the police under Western Australian laws for uh, performing abortions uh, in, in a clinic which was widely known, which was well used by women for, for um, uh, breaking the West Australian law. And that really did force all of us in Western Australia to confront the issue of what we did about a woman's right to choose. Because those clinics, and there are a number of them uh, in the Perth metropolitan area, had been running quite unhindered, but uh, contrary to the law, for many, many years. And so uh, a, a member of the WA Labor Party, Cheryl Davenport, put up a private member's bill. And we all know how divisive this type of legislation is in our community. And it was extremely divisive. It brought out um, ugly protests and it brought out extreme positions and it brought out quite ridiculous statements. And I have to say a lot of them led by men. And I have to say, and I don't wish to offend anyone in this chamber, but it is always men who seem to lead the charge um, for somehow curtailing women's uh, rights to abortion. And that's why it's heartening to hear Senator Dean Natale this morning speak so passionately as a former medical practitioner on why he supports abortion. But after a very long and um, emotional fight, and certainly it, it, took, um, it had an emotional impact on Cheryl Davenport, the law was changed in Western Australia. And I don't want to revisit that law. I don't want to do that. I'm up for the fight, make no mistake. But I think it's settled. Uh, it's a woman's right to choose. No one is forcing women to, to go off uh, and have an abortion. And it is not a decision taken lightly in any sense uh, of anybody's imagination. And we heard, and I read the report, um, Senator Madigan himself has no evidence to suggest that sex selective abortions are systematically happening in Australia. And we heard from uh, Senator Rustin this morning that indeed uh, three Australian states have outlawed such abortions, although they would be, as uh, Senator Macdonald said, quite hard to police. So what is the purpose really of this legislation? Now, when um, the bill was investigated, there were many, many organisations, including Reproductive Choice Australia, uh, who agreed with Senator Madigan that indeed 
we don't have uh, any evidence of this practice occurring in Australia. And many, many submitters and people we should be mindful of uh, when, we, when we make decisions about whether we support a bill, experts in these areas uh, vehemently disagreed with the bill. So groups such as the Women's Health Victoria, the Public Health Association of Australia, the AMA, the Women's Centre for Health Matters, and then we get on to the civil liberties groups, the New South Wales Council for Civ Civil Liberties, Children by Choice, Liberty Victoria, uh, the Women's Abortion Action Campaign, Women's Legal Services, the New South Wales Women's Legal Services and the Reproductive Choice Australia. These are all groups who focus on this issue and have a very valid point of view. Um, and in fact, as I said, we don't have any evidence this is happening in Australia. And certainly, as I said at the outset, whilst I certainly absolutely fundamentally support a, women's, a woman's right to choose, I don't support uh, abortion on the basis of gender selection or unless there are the circumstances that uh, Senator Moore pointed out earlier in her uh, speech this morning. Sometimes there are specific um, gender-related uh, conditions that um, fetuses have and parents may then make a choice to uh, take an abortion on that basis. But I think, um, I think, like other speakers this morning, if this bill is passed, it may well impact on the rights of women to have an abortion. It may well impact. I think it is the beginning of something much bigger, and I really do agree with Senator Di Natale, who thinks this is not a bill about gender selection, but it is a bill about abortion. And as Senator Moore reminded us, abortion is a state issue. It's a state issue, um, and that's really where it, it should remain. And as I said, I was involved in the, the very long and emotional fight in Western Australia, and whilst I'm up for that debate again, I really do think this is an issue we should not be revisiting. And um, recently, Anne Summers wrote in relation to this bill, and she also agreed that there was no evidence to suggest that such abortions were being performed in Australia, uh, and certainly uh, there's no evidence of that. But Anne Summers warns us that this is a red-hot issue among the American right to lifers. And Anne Summers believes this is clearly being imported to Australia to try and inflame the abortion politics in this country. And that would certainly be a backward step. Um, so the question I ask, is this bill really about gender selection? And if it is, um, then what's the evidence? Because by Senator Madigan's own admission, there isn't, in, there isn't any. Or is it really about abortion? And shouldn't we, if we as a community have concerns about this issue, be putting our efforts into community education about the value of children, about the rights of women to choose, about a whole range of things, uh, rather than take uh, vote up a bill which would be almost impossible to, to police, and by everyone's admission, by everyone's admission, has really no bearing on uh, what's happening here in Australia. Uh, if there are concerns, let's get some community education happening. Let's not put a bill in place which really doesn't have any bearing at all. So. Um, Given there's no evidence of gender selection, I am inclined to think uh, that it is about the broader issue, issue of abortion. And we know that where restrictions on abortion start to creep in, they are often presented in a very rational way. You know, none of us this morning, nobody's advocated this morning for a broad sweep uh, of abortion on the basis of gender selection. We all think that's an abhorrent thing to do. But I think this bill is really the thin edge of the wedge, and to present something as rational when it really isn't 
I think, uh, begs a bigger question. So I think the issue here is that though the bill may sound reasonable enough, um, it's how it, what it introduces and what follows on from that. And these bills are often crafted so that over time um, abortions become more difficult to access. So let's have a look at a practical application of this bill. If the bill was passed, is there then an additional set of questions a woman has to answer before she is granted uh, the right to terminate her pregnancy? Would she have to go undergo some kind of psychological testing? Um, would there be some criminal, criminal penalty if at a later stage uh, it was found out that indeed an abortion was performed on the basis of gender. I mean, what is the practical application here? And how then does that get extended to um, impact on a woman's right to choose? Nobody's thought that through, um, and we don't know how it would work in practical terms. And I think that it is simply uh, something that sounds reasonable. But over time, it starts to impact and it starts to restrict um, how abortions are performed in this country. And why I say that is I've looked at what's happening in the US. And in the US, the abortion debate seems to um, come up every few years and it's hotly contested. And we've seen in the US 22 states that have adopted much more restrictive practices. We've seen different, up to about 70 different restrictions on abortion limits uh, and on doctors, limits on doctors, limits on clinics, limits on medication uh, and uh, limits around abortion and on the coverage. So uh, that came from this kind of reasonable discussion that then starts to really impact on the rights of women. And that isn't something I don't think people in this place support. And I would hope that in 2014 we are not going to be going down that track. And of course, as Senator Moore reminded us, that the federal parliament doesn't have the power to regulate in this area. This is a, this is a matter for the states, and uh, that's really where this a matter should be best dealt with. Um, and we know already in, a, in Australia that we have some restrictions, and in the US, there, in Texas, there's now um, an example of where uh, abortion clinics, in order to operate, have to have access to hospitals, and we've seen many hospitals uh, refuse that access. And I know in my own state of Western Australia, and indeed I've spoken about this. Uh, matter in this place, we have had uh, a public hospital in a low socio-economic area of Perth be contracted out to be privatised to be run by the Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church made it very, very clear to the state government that it would not perform any type of reproductive uh, technology, and it is the right of the Catholic Church to, to make to make that claim. I'm not suggesting for one minute that they can't make that claim. But the question then arises, should they be running our public hospital systems? And of course, what's now happened uh, in Midland is we had a public hospital run by the state which performed the whole range of reproductive and family planning matters. So that meant abortions, vasectomies, all sorts of uh, reproductive and family matters were performed at that hospital. Now they won't be performed by the new uh, Catholic hospital. And so that's created a dilemma for the state. So imagine if uh, an abortion clinic needed to refer uh, a patient to that hospital, that Catholic hospital, uh, that person would not be admitted. So we already have these types of unintended consequences happening in, in our country that are, that are not anybody's intention, but it is what happens when we're not clear about what our public health agenda is. So um, let's get some certainty here about what we're doing. Um, 
we, we can't support this bill because it does start to impinge on women's rights. And of course, we've got to look at cost issues. Does the co if this bill was put in place um, and, uh, and additional procedures have to be put in place, questionnaires, testing, psychological testing, does the, the cost start to increase? Um, you know, what, what really are the practical implications of this bill? And we really haven't had a discussion about uh, those sorts of things. And I think that, that though that's really where my concern starts to creep in, we start to, um, to discriminate against women. Um, and certainly, I don't think anyone in this place would want to make it harder for low-income women in particular to be able to make those choices about their family and to take the really tough decision to uh, have a termination. Um, of course, not on the basis of gender, but to simply exercise her rights. And we don't want to see a bill start to increase uh, a woman's right to choose because she's got to somehow convince a psychologist or a doctor or a nurse that it's not a, a gender-based uh, abortion. And there's certainly no protections around that. So I would hope that we can have um, rational and respectful debate in this place around this bill. As I said, as a, as a feminist and a supporter of women's rights, I cannot support this bill for those reasons. I say again that I do not support uh, the, um, the use of abortion on the basis of gender, but I think this bill today is really looking at a much bigger question. Let's leave uh, abortion in the states where it properly belongs. Um, if we use the government's rhetoric, they don't run abortion clinics, so therefore they shouldn't be uh, putting, uh, supporting a bill that, um, that does just that, to put some control over what's happening. And it is a very personal decision. It's a decision between uh, the woman and her family and the medical practitioner. And we as politicians and parliament should not be interfering in that fundamental right. So I would urge people today to not support this bill. Uh, it needs to be seen for what it is, and my view is it is really uh, about the whole issue of abortion. It is, not, um, it is not on the basis of gender selection, because who's to say that if this bill was passed, we wouldn't be here uh, in a few months' time with another private member's bill that looks to curtail some other aspect. Now, if this were happening in our country, of course we would need to be doing something about it. But there's absolutely no proof by Senator Madigan's own admission, by the admission of those who work in the area, the women's health groups and so on. In fact, there was a study done, which uh, is in the additional comments by the Australian Greens, to say that, um, in fact, of some almost 600 patients who had terminations uh, in, a, in a study, none of those patients uh, had an abortion because of uh, gender selection. Now, Senator Macdonald said that it's very hard to get to the bottom of, but we do have a clinical study before us that said there's no proof. And I think we have to take it at face value. So I would urge all of my colleagues in this place, no matter which uh, political party you belong to, to not support this bill. But let's be vigilant about um, gender uh, selection abortions if we think they're going on. There's no evidence of that. Um, and I would say the best way to combat that, if we have any concerns at all, is through our women's health clinics, uh, through our hospitals, and through our medical practitioners, not through the blunt instrument of a bill in the federal parliament which would punish every single woman um, who desires to, uh, to have an abortion. It is a woman's right to choose, and I don't want to support any bill that I believe uh, interferes with that right, that very difficult right, uh, for women in this country. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Thank you.